I heard it through the grapevine that another episode of a certain review series has just been released. Hey everybody, and welcome to episode 19 of Cave Cat's Movie and TV Reviews, again with your favorite host, the one and only Cave Cat. As you could probably guess from what I said just a few seconds ago, I'm going to be talking about the California Raisins. First off, it's time for the history of how the California Raisins came to be. The California Raisins were first created by advertising company Foot, Cone, and Belding back in 1986 for the Sun Made Raisin Company, due to Seth Warner, one of the writers for the California Raisin Advisory Board, coming up with the idea of having dancing raisins singing Marvin Gaye's hit song, I Heard It Through the Grapevine. The very first commercial featuring this idea proved to be so much of a hit that it ended up paving the way for more future commercials featuring the California Raisins, along with appearances in other forms of media as well. The commercials were actually produced by claymation animation legend Will Vinton for his studio, Vinton Studios. Interestingly enough, the California Raisins were also included in Will Vinton's A Claymation Christmas Celebration, before also starring in their own claymation animated special called Meet the Raisins, as well as a sequel known as The Raisins Sold Out, The California Raisins 2. Then in 1989, Will Vinton Studio teamed up with Murakami Wolf Swenson, who was best known for producing all three of the Puff the Magic Dragon animated specials, along with two Strawberry Shortcake specials, and more famously Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, in order to produce a 2D animated series based on the California Raisins, which is the subject for today's episode, that show being The California Raisin Show. The California Raisin Show was produced as a part of the CBS Saturday Morning lineup, airing from September 1989 to December 1989, airing for only one season. Anyway, the show follows the adventures of the California Raisins, consisting of AC, Bebop, Stretch, and Red, who make their living as a rock band, in a world entirely populated by anthropomorphic fruits and vegetables. This is not the first time that the concept of a world of anthropomorphic fruits and vegetables have been used in an animated show or animated short film. Back in 1939, there was the Flesher Studios color classic short, The Fresh Vegetable Mystery, also featuring anthropomorphic vegetables as pivotal characters, though the main character of that short was a police officer potato that had a stereotypical Irish accent. Then we got the California Raisin Show 50 years later, which also follows the concept of anthropomorphic fruits and vegetables, while the show predates VeggieTales and that concept by four years. But anyway, moving on with the plot of the show, the California Raisins make their living as a rock band, as I've mentioned before, but they're actually a cover band. In each episode, they typically sing three songs per episode, the songs originally having been performed by artists that were mostly associated with Motown. That's actually a pretty decent concept, having the California Raisins sing Motown songs of the 50s, the 60s, and occasionally the 70s. But as for the show itself, it's not really anything special. Most of the episodes usually just have the California Raisins get booked for a concert, thanks to their manager Rudy Begaman, while at the same time having to deal with a problem before the concert. Of course, there are also a few episodes where the California Raisins have to deal with some recurring enemies, such as Boss Squash and his sidekick Babyface Radish, as well as rival rock star Lick Broccoli and his manager Leonard Lima Bean. Out of all those villains, the only one that I actually liked was Lick Broccoli, because I like how he was depicted as being a punkish rocker, even if he was a stereotypical British rock star, similar to Mick Jagger. From what I heard, there were a lot of people that didn't re really like this show because they didn't like how the California Raisins were rendered in 2D animation, as opposed to claymation. And yeah, their 2D designs aren't exactly the best compared to how they were portrayed in the claymation style. It's like I said before in my video talking about the Garfield movie. Sometimes the art style of a franchise can either look really good or really bad if rendered in 3D animation. But in this case, it's sort of the inverse, where the art style of Will Vinton's claymation style looks rather mixed when rendered in 2D animation. Then again, there are times where things that have been animated in stop motion animation, or even in 3D animation, have been adapted into 2D animation, and the results are pretty mixed. One example of this that I can name would be Larry Boy The Cartoon Adventures, which is basically a spin off of the 3D animated Veg VeggieTales series where the characters, despite looking like they did in 3D, look rather bizarre when animated in 2D. Though it's no surprise that all four of those episodes were animated by the exact same studio that animated the third and fourth seasons of Dexter's Laboratory. But anyway, with the California Raisins show, it just feels like an attempt to try and capitalize on the success of the California Raisins commercials. And on the subject of advertising mascots getting their own shows, 
I remember hearing how Chester Cheetah, the mascot of Cheetos, was originally going to get his own animated series that would have aired on the Fox Children's Network in 1992, but never came to pass, most likely due to protests from Action for Children's Television, which, fun fact, was actually one of the parents' groups responsible for the Garbage Pail Kids cartoon getting removed from network television. And then there was also how Cool Spot, the mascot for 7-Up, got his own video game in the mid-1990s, aside from starring in commercials in the 90s. Not to mention how the McDonaldland characters also got an animated special in the late 80s that was released by High Tops Video and animated by Deke Entertainment before getting their own direct-to-video series a decade later, animated by Klasky Chupo. But with this show, it's not as charming or captivating as the commercials that featured the California Raisins. However, at least it still has a sense of levity to it without making the show come across as being pretentious. Other shows such as Rubik the Amazing Cube or even He-Man and the Masters of the Universe feel like that they're just too big for their britches, trying to hype themselves just because they're animated shows based on toys. Then there are other shows also based on toy lines like Popples or Pound Puppies that are just designed to be commercial fluff. So in the case of Pound Puppies, at least it did have a pretty decent concept, but other than that, it's nothing special. And I think that the same can be pretty much said for the California Raisins show. With its rather decent concept, I give it a pretty decent six and a half stars. It's also no surprise that the California Raisins were eventually retired in 2002 due to the fact that the California Raisin Advisory Board had finally gone under. The reason for this was because the members of the grape farming industry were alarmed at the increased fees that were used in paying for the California Raisin Campaign, which resulted in all of the profits being sent back to Foot, Cone, and Belding. It's kind of a shame that the California Raisin Campaign ended up going under because of that, but it was kind of expected, considering how repetitive it was starting to get. But at least the Sun Made Raisin Company is still going even in spite of that, so it's not a complete loss even though I don't like raisins, preferring dried cranberries instead. Well, anyway, that about does it for this episode of Cave Cats Movie and TV Reviews. I hope that you all enjoyed this episode, and as I keep saying, be sure to like and subscribe to my channel for more new videos from me, whether they're more episodes or something else that might come from me. So until next time, later!